In a world of glitz and glam, flashing lights and screaming fans, most people are unaware of the war that rages behind the scenes. And that war includes your favorite artist and your favorite songs. This is The Dark Side of Songwriting. Hosted by Naeem Edwards. Welcome to The Dark Side of Songwriting. My name is Naeem Edwards. I am your host. And today, you know, years ago, right when I got into the music industry and started working in the music business, if someone had asked me where my mindset was at and where my mind frame was at as far as what I thought was going to happen, what I thought was supposed to happen, what I thought about what the situation was going to be, obviously from pure ignorance and naivete because I'm on the outside of the fence at that time, I would have told them that the music industry had a magical type of allure to it. And I will still say that it does on the outside of the fence, not on this side at this point, obviously, right? Um, I would say that the, the business in the industry was more like a leap pad, like a launch pad. All I had to do was pop off from here and it would be a ripple effect. All I had to do was make this work and it would be a domino effect. If I can get this to jump how I needed to jump in some type of way, it don't have to be perfect, but it needs to have some type of spark in motion to it. If I can get that going, then I can start working on other things and that would get me to the resources that would get me to wherever I wanted to get to with whatever dreams or aspirations or whatever I had at the moment, right? You get on this side of the music industry or you get in the music industry, period, and you realize, wait, 100% of the 99% of what I thought is bullshit. Like, it's, it's bullshit. It, nothing that you think, nothing that you have experienced before is like the monster of the actual music business in the music industry. And I say that to say that it brought up a lot of ideas and thoughts about how the music industry 100% failed Rico Nasty. And before I get into the things that she was saying, because a, a lot of what she was saying is a lot of what most artists go through behind the scenes. See, a lot of people don't even get to the point where Rico Nasty was at. That right there, you would say, is a blessing in itself. But when we, we get to looking at the mechanics and all of the mechanisms that go into even getting to the point where Rico Nasty was at, especially being somebody where Rico's Nasty, Rico Nasty's image was not one of what you would think a female rapper of today's time and compass. And that was one of the things that ever since, because I already knew about who she was, because obviously she's from the area, right? But, and if you don't know, I'm in Virginia. She's up there. And uh, she was she was coming out of PG County. So, you know, that DMV, I'm not from the DMV area, but, you know, it's, it's, it's an hour drive. But... The first thing that came to my mind was this was something that was 100% out of the box, out of the norm. It was given, you know, those pockets in music that we often overlook because they're not popular. I was having a conversation with Fio the other day about who the biggest rapper was. And I would say that Russ was a contender for biggest rapper, you know, biggest independent rapper of today outside of obviously the legends like tech nine and stuff like that but like the biggest rap one of the biggest rappers of today is russ and it has nothing to do with what everybody else perceives it to be because a lot of what popularity is in mainstream music and i'm just talking mainstream music right now a lot of what that popularity is is visibility from the machine resources from the machine push from the machine when you don't have all those things and you're able to maintain some type of success no matter how big or small that puts you in the same category as those people that have that push from that machine except what you do is more valuable than what the machine can give you where the machine was going with rico nasty even though we know that and i was i brought the rust thing up to say that 
these people, like these type of people exist in the realm. We all exist together, but they exist in pockets and realms that the people who get all of the attention, they don't traffic in those type of same areas. And that's what I would say about what Rico Nasty was when she came out. It was fresh. It was new. It was vibrant. It was energetic. It was like that rock star type of thing because she did a lot of, you know, trap metal and she had her moniker of like sugar trap and all of that type of stuff. And it was like that rock infused with that punk infused with that emo infused with that rap and that hip hop. And it was all working together to be, a, it was supposed to be like this alternative girl movement because that exists in the realm. But even if her lyrics might have been charged and I say charged, like they might've had, you know, still rapping about like semi gangster stuff and rapping about drugs and all these other little things, but that's just a part of the rock lifestyle in general. So it's not off, you know, it's not off balance. It's not off key or anything like that, but her image was too positive for where the music industry wanted to take female rappers because when you looked at Rico, no matter what was coming out of her mouth, it was going to be respect. When you looked at Rico, and this is from the mainstream perspective of it, not going to those smaller subcategories and pockets, but it wasn't rap. It wasn't, everything wasn't prostitute rap. Everything wasn't selling my body. We had a lot of other stuff going on and a lot of other lyrics and a lot of other styles and a lot of other things. And I think that when, well, I know that when she came in, they were trying to push the prostitute thing. And so they were kind of pushing her off to the side and it was pushing her off because, Hey, it's a little too positive for us. We don't need, even though it was just fun and light and happy and it was some real shit sprinkled in there that's not the industry that the mainstream wanted to go she just got caught up in the riptide of what the industry wanted to do now that we got that part out the way i want to read some of the tweets that she put up back in august of this year this first one said I used to find the strength to get up and try to have good days and i guess she meant and get dressed up but recently I just rot in the bed and can't shake it. I keep buying pets because I have no friends. I need help. I sit in my bed and rot all day. It doesn't matter what clothes I have or how much money or show I make. I'm still sad because I'm alone. I'm lonely. I'll be quiet now. I'm honestly off all this shit. And you know, let me see if this is rolling off. Damn, I don't have to date for when these tweets came out but there was a situation where she was on tour with playboy cardi she was opening up for playboy cardi and ken carson and people were booing her everywhere she went and you know throwing stuff on stage and saying they didn't want to see her they came there for cardi you know just being disrespectful and she called it out as racism as she should because that's absolutely what it was and, you know, people in the crowd was like, we're not racist. We we just didn't come here to see you and, you know, all of that stuff. But a lot of the tweets that she put out, obviously a cry for help because, like I said, we get into this industry and we think that it is one thing. We think that all I got to do is get to this level and everything is going to be cool, not knowing that. If you've ever excelled at a process, it's the same thing in the music industry, except you have to, you need to fight and win. And this is if you want to be successful, you need to fight and win, but you have to cross the moat with two broken legs, two broken arms, a saddle on your back. It's, it's sharks in the water, it's snakes in the water, it's birds and all type of birds of prey coming and pecking at you and everybody pulling at you with your way and all type of things. <sighs> My phone just, that's cool. Um, all type of things that is going on while you're in the middle of trying to exceed, while you're in the middle 
of trying to excel at your process. The first thing is having a job in the music industry, whether you're an employee of a label or you're independent or you're a part of a team or you're a part, you're an entrepreneur, meaning that you are a part of an entrepreneur's success story in a way where you are successful as well, but you help someone else become successful. The first thing is it's going to change you because it's an unorthodox job. It is a job nonetheless. You got to wake up every day and do the same thing. Well, actually, it's more of a job because you're basically a contractor for a label, but you're an employee for a label until you can make money. So when she went over there to Atlantic Records, even though she had seen success in the mixtape circuit, she had a name. And people used to clown, oh, we're going to clown on her, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. That's cool, but she made a name for herself. She made a way for herself. So obviously there was work already being done. You already had your own foundation. When you go from having your own foundation to transitioning into somebody else's system, the rules become different. The procedures and the processes become different. Everything that you know of becomes different because you think, okay, this is what got me successful. I need to continue to do more of what got me successful because people love me here. Like they love me here. So I know when I get out there, the people that love me here, they're going to love me when I get out to the bigger level. 100% not true. One, because once you integrate into somebody else's system, you now have to listen to what they have to say because you're an employee now. You're not the captain of your ship anymore because how they trick you because they're wrong. They're like, I want to put that on the table now. The label is 100% wrong. They don't know what to do with anyone. They don't know anything about our culture. All they know how to do is lie, cheat, steal, and pay people to do the work for them. They're just the bank. It's like the bank doesn't know anything about you know, your inner workings until they pull it up and they look. So you go into their system and they have you changing and they're telling you, you'll believe them telling you that you need to change everything that was working instead of doubling down and dumping the gas on what you're doing and getting a little bit, maybe more fine tuned with your business, learning terms, making sure you got your own systems up and running and going and you have the most effective people for the job for your team or if you don't want to be a person who completely disregards everybody on your team bringing people in to show your team how to be the best they can be because at least these are people i can trust no we go into their systems and we start acquiescing to what they want even though they don't know how you even got popping anymore this isn't the day where they build people up anymore this is the day where you need to come build so we can get a hold of your intellectual property and put you in a bind to the point where you have no choice but to sell it to us for peanuts and we make money in perpetuity. And again, in perpetuity means forever. The second thing is your situation when you go over to these other people's systems, it changes everybody around you. So you thought that getting yourself to the point where we've been grinding, we've been working, we've been doing our thing because like, like, can we just pause right there and say that a lot of the times, most of the people around you are just going to stand around and look at you work. They're not going to say anything to you until you get so hot and so bubbling that it's just undeniable. It happens to me all the time. And I'm not even at, no, I don't believe I'm at any type of level where, I mean, I'm hundred percent deniable, like no questions asked about that. And most of y'all are deniable too, but we can all relate to the fact of like somebody will be congratulating everybody else in public and then they'll slide in your DM and congratulate you in private. Like this is somebody that saw you from the very beginning, not somebody that just came and just found you and discovered you and just wanted to say, hey, and is happy that you wrote them back. These are people that watched you build brick by brick by brick and then they come in and everybody else can get the public praise, but you, I got the, I can't let people know that I fuck with you. I can't let people know that, you know, we cool or they'll try to guise it as some type of exclusivity and relationship. But getting back to 
your team and people around you. It started not even just your team, but your team and your family and everybody that is in your immediate circle. So if we had to do it for the team side, your team changes because now the workload is different. They're dealing with big, you're dealing with bigger scale. You're dealing with is you're, you're going from the micro to the macro. So now everything is changing and people's obligations. They're, they're still the same for as long as they can last until the obligations get to being bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's just to the point where you either, you know, you bring in the help or you get these people trained up. The next thing is it changes your family and that still encompasses the same thing about, you know, changing the people around you. It changes your family because now you become the meal ticket for like, you know, lack of a better term, you become the prize. You're the person that now we finally might be able to break this generational curse as people would say, because there are no such thing as curses. There's patterns. You now get to, that point where people are either going to lock in and want to be a part of what you got on. I'm talking about your family or they're going to fall. And that would be friends too. They are going to fall by the wayside because they don't understand what is going to take to not even just maintain, but work this up so we can finally get to that point. So obviously the regular emotions that come in there, anger, jealousy, bitter, all, you know, bitterness, all these other things come into play, but you're going to have envy coming into play. You're going to have confusion coming into play. You're going to have people dealing with all the type of things that never would have been the case. If you never got on, it would have never been the case. If you never even got to the point where you were even making a livable wage off of what you were doing. These aren't things that were, they were seeds that were already in them because I want you to realize that all of these things are already in these people. They just needed to be watered to actually grow. And every time you was getting up and you was going to the studio and every time Rico was getting up and she was doing things because again, her tweet, she didn't give any specific details, but these are the things that people go through behind the scenes. Every day she was going to the studio, going to Atlantic, participating in these things, running in her own lane, doing her own thing. She had a little tit for tat with Coyle Ray at one little point, all these little things was watering the seed inside of her where not her watering the seeds inside of the people around her that it was only a matter of time before something actually sprouted. It just took that one beam of light to actually get that seed to actually sprout something that was already inside of these people. So if you ever had a cry out for help, before, if you had to cry out for help, people would come and they would be at your side and they would ride for you like it was no other. And then, you know, these per this person would probably never post on social media. They would post that day that was with you. So they would, people would know, like, you know, you said you were sad and this was the person that came to the rescue. You known for being that friend. You known for being that cousin. You known for being that team member. But as soon as she found some success, if you already had that bitterness inside of you, whether you knew it or not, or that hatred, that envy, that jealousy, that confusion, that irateness, that irritation, you know, you might be like, oh, she got success. She don't, what, what is she complaining about? She got everything she wants. And that's another, that's the third thing that it does, that it forces, your success is going to force people around you and everybody to disregard Anything that has to do with what's going on inside your heart, your heart and what's going on inside your head. It forces people to disregard that. And so they'll say stuff like you got, you got money. What are you complaining about? You got $3 million. Why are you complaining? You're a millionaire. You got a brand new Audi. She rap about her Audi a lot. They will say, Rico, you rap about your Audi. What, why like you have an Audi Rico? I don't even have a car. You should be thankful. And you're like, yeah, I'm really like going through a depression right now. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm real sick. And they'll say, but you got an Audi. Like, you better be sick in your Audi. Like, they'll say things like that, just totally disregarding how you really feel and how what's really going on and how you even got to those feelings. And this is going to like number four. I didn't even number these, but like, 
how you even got to these feelings is because this industry is not what you thought it was going to be. This industry, you thought you was just going to be able to ramp up what you was doing, not knowing again, swinging back to number one, that everything was going to completely change. So you get over here and you realize like, wow, they really don't fuck with me. How they said they fuck with me, but I thought they was fucking with me because they was giving me resources. I thought they was fucking with me because they actually showed some interest in what I was doing. Showing interest does not mean they fuck with it. It means there's an opportunity there that they can get and slip through the crack to be able to benefit from it. And they want to be the first person to benefit from it. So you thinking like, oh, my career, you know, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I want to be on this because, you know, you got songs with Doja. You got songs with all these people. You're doing all these things and all of this stuff. And not even knowing that the label has an agenda to like, yeah, we're going to let you get your shit off. But we're not we're not pushing this message. We're trying to push the prostitute thing. You're not on the prostitute wave like that. There's some respectability about you. So we just can't, eh, you know what I'm saying? And then as soon as you stop delivering. This is when these labels decide that, yeah, we can go ahead and toss you to the side. But the problem with tossing you to the side is you don't get to be able to leave the situation just because they aren't benefiting from the situation right now because they want to hold on to you. It's just kind of like being in one of those relationships where motherfuckers just don't block their ex and don't not talk to their ex or some shit like that. You're like the girl you like the label's ex-girlfriend that they still keep texting they don't change your name to pizza hut in their phone they just you know they text you every now and then see how you doing they text you every now and then see if they got access to you they text you every now and then to be monitoring spirits to see what you got going on to make sure like oh you got something good like okay i can come i can come around there and fucking benefit fuck fuck with you and benefit from that but if it ain't nothing it's just like all right uh, you know i'll check up on you a little bit later that's how labels treat it. It's, it's, a, it's a relationship for a reason. I'm sorry about scratching my nose so much. I fucking washed my hair. Got oil on my face. But like. They want to keep you around just in case you actually swing back and swing or whatever. But a lot of times they just want to take you and allow you to get into these situations where it's like they want the benefits. But as soon as you hit a rock or get into a hard place, they don't come back and offer anything that is uh, going to be a help to you because they already came through the door with an agenda. They absolutely wanted to destroy her and put her away because it's no room in the mainstream life of that. Because see what Rico, all Rico had to do was continue to serve her base, but it's hard to continue to serve your people and continue to serve your base when one, the people around you don't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't know anything about music business. They don't know anything about navigating this industry. They're not, they don't even know where to start so where they can learn. Two, you're not, you're in a shit place where shit is falling apart around you with people around you and every situation around you. Three, the industry is not what you thought it was going to be. It's not anything how... It was supposed to be laid out to you, so you were lied to and you were sold a dream about how this was going to go. And nobody's offering you anything and you don't even know where to begin to even try to receive service to how to fix where your situation is at the moment. So you can at least get yourself out the rut so you can start moving around again. Because a lot of these artists are in ruts that they don't understand why they're there. So they'll turn to drugs. They'll turn to whatever vice they can get their hands on whatever their personal vice is. And all the while, all people want you to do is deliver and entertain them. Not understanding that, hey, I'm a human being because I come 100. Because, like, I, I don't make this very clear right now. I should have said this in the beginning. But Rico Nasty is absolutely my favorite female rapper to come out in the last 10 years. So, I, no holes bar on that one. My favorite to come out in 10 years. But the past 10 years, but you know, this is the game of the industry. It's a lot of mind fuckery. It's a lot of mind games. It's a lot of self destructing on the part of people who had an agenda to, that we didn't know anything about and that nobody bothered to explain. And that's why I'd be so hard around about these motherfuckers who be standing around 
and these old motherfuckers who allow our people to even get to this point where why do we even have a, somebody that's in a situation like this? Why do we have anybody throwing anything at anybody on stage? Why, how do we have an artist that's depressed? They're supposed to be able to do their job and be able to go about their life and do whatever they want to do. But that was the play the whole time was to back her into a situation because there's no education for the people that was around her. They're just doing the best they can. That's not like it is an excuse because I can't take that as an excuse, but like this was the play the whole time. So she hadn't really said nothing publicly after she said this, even though this wasn't that long ago. This is the dark side of the music business is the ignorance and the naivete. And that's what's swinging back to what I said in the beginning of not knowing and not knowing that you get in here and you know, you, you have, there's a lot of speed learning that has to be done because there's a lot of shit that you're going to have to learn. And a lot of people that have to be watched. You can't trust nobody that's sent to you. You can't really trust the people around you like that unless they was already rock ribbed people that you had. That's why it don't make sense throwing your whole, throwing a team of people away. You know, you can trust with your life and you know, you can trust with your well being. You can trust with your business for people that you don't know. But then, you know, there's always wiggle room in there. But, you know, it's all type of variables when it comes to this business and this industry that either you're going to be a victim or you're going to be victorious. So, I, but I hope Rico is getting better and feeling better. And I'm sending her my love. Like I said, my favorite for the past 10 years, the best of the past 10 years, absolutely, on every conceivable level hands down but this was a dark side of songwriting